Esports orgs. You know them. You love them. You've seen them. You've seen the esports orgs. Well, I want to talk uh, just about how one of the fundamental problems we've got, and it only gets worse when times are hard, is the rise of the grifter bedroom organization. The grifter bedroom organization. Basically, you'll find lots of people want to get to the big show, but they don't really know how. So what they do is they will self-fund an organization. They'll pay some dickhead online, £25, $25 to make them a logo. They'll come up with a name that's usually terrible, uh, that has no sort of marketability or upside. They'll, uh, you know, start with shit players that they tell everyone is great while they kind of put, you know, they feel their way through. And eventually they might somehow just through sheer force of will, but typically because of longevity. They've been around a while, so people assume they're legit, even though, again, it's all going on a credit card. They uh, somehow look into having a good team. And Team NKT was one of those uh, teams. Now, listen, you, you're going you're gonna to say Team NKT. I've not heard of them. Well, listen, Team NKT is active in not just uh, CSGO. So it was also active in Valorant. They're a Thai esports organization. Uh, and they're they were based in Bangkok, right? So <laughs> close to my heart. Like, if it hadn't have gone the way it went, I would have absolutely been pulling for these guys, right? Because I love Bangkok. You're being juvenile in the chat right now. We're better than that round here, right? I love Bangkok. One of, one of the best fucking places on earth. I, I, I want to get back there. It's just sort of hard to do it. Like when, cause I'm always scared I'm never going to come back, you know? But I haven't been for a long time. Bangkok is fucking great. It's just great for everything. It's whatever you want to do, you can do it in Bangkok. And, you know, the food... The fucking party and the atmosphere, the fucking street life. It's fucking great. It's just a super cool place. In a beautiful country, in a beautiful part of the world as well. Uh, you can have this insane 24-hour city, neon. And then, you know, you can, f you can fucking drive 30 minutes and jungle. Not a problem, you know. Anyway, uh, I love it. So, uh, Team NKT were close to my heart. And they were coming up in the world, Team NKT. They were coming up in the world. They had a hell of a team. You probably didn't even know, right? Look at this lineup. Gratisfaction. We all love Gratisfaction. Remember Gratisfaction? Bentet. This was the latest part of the Bentet curse, right? Bentet went there. I always get his name wrong, but is it just XIGN? That's what I always just say. One of the best South Koreans we got in CSGO. Urkast is IGL. You know him. Obviously from Mongolia, right? And so you know, and, and all right, they've got they've they've got another Mongolian player in there. I don't really know Zerolte. You uh, see, I never want to say Ziggin. It, like, I, do people say Ziggin? They say Ziggin. That sounds awful. It doesn't roll off the tongue very well. All right, but, you know, look, you can see they've had the great machine gun, Davies' friend, Impression, Excurate. I think is just meant to be accurate. Annihilation, you know, like they've been, they've got through some good players, like from that region, Team NKT, and this team, like real talk, in the state of this scene, that actually is a fucking like no bullshit. That's a sleeper team, in a world where we have to fucking pretend the Mongols are a really really good team because they can beat EG. That's actually a sleeper team. That's like a team that gets an upset in, in a tournament right now. So I, I'm I'm just saying. So anyway, I saw the news and it it was just it's just esports. It was so classic. They had a player on the team <laughs> that was kind of like a sub, you know, kind of had ties to the management, that kind of thing. And so there was just this announcement. We regret to inform you, which I, I like immediately. It's, it's all right, mate. Don't have to worry about me. We regret to inform you. That Asbaya Senzu Monkbald has been found guilty of a fraud scheme that affected our players and management earlier this year. As Senzu has confessed to his actions, we are working diligently with all parties involved to resolve this matter. At the present time, Senzu will remain under contract with Team NKT. Talk about contract jail. And will not be allowed to participate in any trials or tournaments without our permission. 
to any teams or entities interested in trying out a player that literally has been involved in a fraud scheme. Oh, where do I sign? Can I, can I, can I pick him up? To any teams or entities interested in trying out as by a Senzu Monk Bull, please cut that team entities management directly. So, <laughs> right. Okay. He ran a fraud scheme that affected players. You've just seen the players. Affected players and management. You bench him, but you are keeping him. Like, why don't you just cut him loose? Like, what possible value is keeping somebody who's committed fraud around in your org? Like, by the way, who's enjoying having it? Does he come in for practice? Does he do scrims? What does he do? Like, is he on? Is he on the Discord? Is he there? Oh, you're all right, lads. Sorry about the fraud, lads. <laughs> like, okay, fine. Then you go. He can't go for any trials or tournaments without our permission. Probably give that permission. Probably just get rid of him. Would be my, you know, unless you want to, unless he signed some mega long contract and you just want to have him in some form of indentured servitude. Then fine. And then to any teams or entities interested in trying him out contact us well this is a fucking ringing endorsement at the front end isn't it like that that's the greatest <laughs> endorsement we're kicking him out for fraud but he can click heads probably so give him a try do i get him for free no you have to buy him out <laughs> so i have to pay for the guy guilty of fraud yeah that's the deal what so i get an untrustworthy shit house, and you get money, okay? I'm going to go and talk to the rest of my people, and we'll see. So anyway, I was like, okay, f a fraud scheme. Fraud scheme. Fraud scheme. What do you think of when you think of, like, fraud scheme? Like, Bernie Madoff, like, fucking, you know what I mean? It's fraud scheme, like a scheme. It's a scheme. Right, okay. So, a scheme is, like, complicated. A scheme, like, it's like Ocean's Eleven or something, you know? Like, you fucking plan it out. You do a scheme, a caper, a heist. You know, you need brains. You need forward planning. It's big. It's, you know, it's a big deal. Like, how do you do a scheme, right? And so I'm like, okay, what the fuck's this kid done? It must be some high-level shit. This is Ben Tet. Right, so you know it's good. I love Ben Tet. He's one of my favourite players. Remember that time on By the Numbers, I said he could be a top 10 player in the world. I even sort of still stand by that. I don't even think I was deluded. I did say that. I'm pretty sure I did say that. I can't remember. I might have said that. I think I did say that. I don't even care. Whatever. He just, he just needed to play in a good team. He just needed support. So naturally gifted as a player. Anyway, whatever. I can personally confirm this is 100% true, said Ben Tet, who could have been top 10 in the world, but... Got unlucky. We have screenshots that show Senzu confessing to us. Okay, confessing what, Benta? What actually happened is he gambled our skins that we lent to him and subsequently lost them. He then attempted to lie to us and avoid paying us back. Right. Now, I have to say, guys, okay, I have to say, when you say to me, fraud scheme okay i am thinking there is a scheme of sorts involved there's not a scheme in saying can i just borrow that expensive thing of yours <laughs> can i just have your money right can you lend me it yeah all right then. can i have it back now lost it that that's not really a fraud scheme is it there's no there's no scheme. Like, you've just... You're just a dickhead. <laughs> I remember the first thing my mum used to say to me when I was a kid. If I ever got my hand on anything nice, which was fucking rare, because we were dirt poor, she'd say, don't take it to school. That was rule number one, because the kids will steal it. She would write loads of times. I had one of them Transformer watches. You remember them fucking ones? They looked like like uh, the ones that used to jump out of sound with, the tapes, but they were a watch. I got one of them. I think my fucking gram got it for me. Don't take it to school, but I wanted to show it off, didn't I? I wanted to show it off to the kids. Look at my fucking Transformer watch. And I don't know. I, you know, it was a rough school. I turned my back for a second. 
I've been pushed, I've been cajoled. Some pickpockets finesse the transfer. I've kept the strap. The straps, because he comes out with the strap, doesn't he? I've kept the strap, I've got the strap. But the tran he's gone. Mini Megatron's gone, he's gone. Gone forever, never getting that back. Now, that wasn't a scheme. <laughs> I was a dickhead, and I just got my shit to. Yeah, victim blaming, they call it now. I, I still got the strap. I mean, shit, man, clip that, that's out of context right now. Another Jake Lucky video coming up. Uh, and down on the stream, when Richard Lewis said he's got the strap, was this a reference to This Is America, or was he threatening to shoot people in Minecraft in a video game? He's done bad tweets before. Remember that time he told Rocket League fans to fuck off, uh, frick off? And these are those tweets, but I've changed. I've used inspect element to change the word fuck to frick. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, I, I had the strap, but you know there was no scheme involved. There was there was no scheme. Anyway, another thing my mom told me. She said, "Don't take it to school." The other thing she said, and my granddad used to say this as well. He used to say, "Never a lender nor a borrower be." That was one of my granddad's rules for life. My mother imparted that wisdom on me uh, before I'd even met my granddad. Never a, never a lender nor a borrower be. That was one of his rules for life. In other words, you don't loan things out and you don't borrow things from other people. And if you don't do either of those things, you can't get into trouble around those things, around both of those things. You'll never be in debt to someone. You'll never lose something and then have to like try desperately to give it back. Equally, if somebody has to borrow some shit off you and you just politely say no, you can never have your shit taken, right? Never a lender nor a borrower be. Thank you, Grandad. And again, I'd said, fuck you, Grandad. And metaphorically pissed on his grave. Because I've lent money. And I've borrowed money. And I've lent books and borrowed books. And I've done every I've defied him. Defied him and cursed his eternal soul. Curse you, Grandad, for your good advice that I didn't listen to. Because I've done it loads of times. And by the way, I've been fucking wrecked loads of times. Back when DVDs were a thing. Oh, the DVDs that I've lost. In fact, I've even got an eSports example. Yeah, I'm going to play it. I lent Semler. I think he's still got it. I am I'm not calling him out falsely here. I lent him a copy. I had the super, like, old copy of the Gulag Archipelago. He's still got it. And I never lend it or a borrow a B. Now, what I'll say is, was Semler involved in some sort of Game. No, obviously, we just were on the road a lot. He has to borrow a book he was super interested in. I've got one of his books up there as well. It's a Dan Simmons book. You know, we did a book exchange. And then we didn't see each other for ages. There's no scheme. Yeah, we just politely robbed each other. Right? It wasn't a scheme. I even said as I handed over the book to Semler, I said, eh, if my granddad were alive to see this day, he'd fucking spit in my face. You know, what are you talking about, bro? I said, oh, don't worry about it. Just this thing, innit? So, <laughs> wasn't a scheme. What happened? These players, these grown adults, because don't worry, this, the, the final twist is yet to come. These adults gave a teammate their expensive skins, which he then went to one of these skins casinos, and placed it all on red, and lost them all, and then you can't get them back, right? And then they said, yeah, he confessed that he'd done it. And it's terrible. So I was like, listen, we can all get got, man. One thing that's true in life is we can all get got. Confident strictors, like charismatic people. Anyone can spin you a line of bullshit. If, the bottom line is that if you like somebody and you vibe with somebody, you want to believe the bullshit you want to believe in them. That's how they get you. Anyone can get got. You think you can't get got? It's like them dickheads who go to like a Darren Brown show. You're never getting me. I'm too fucking smart. And they're up there eating a fucking onion like an apple and making a twat of themselves. Oh, I don't even know. Yeah, you, you think that. But everyone can get got. You gotta, and you got to be hyper aware of it. You know? A nice, healthy distrust is a safe way to go through life. Might not be the most... Might not take you to the greatest height, but you'll almost certainly avoid the lowest lows. Your call dealer's choice so i was thinking well what kind of sophisticated <laughs> what kind of sophisticated fraud scheme running skin stealing snake oil selling 
skin wrangler <laughs> could trick these grown ass men. Better be good. So I went, thought, let's let's get to know a bit more about this dude. Now that he's an official scammer. Now that it's out there, he's a scammer. And I was looking up, like, oh, look, bloody hell. Is that how you spell his name? Bloody hell. Oh, my me. He was born in 2006. He might not even be a Zoomer at this point. <laughs> he might be what comes after Zoomers. Spoiler, there's nothing after Zoomers except the death of the world, but okay. So let me get this straight. You, worldly, well-traveled, experienced esports adults had a 16 year old boy come to you and say can i have your skins i just want to loan them and we are on a team with each other for a total of six weeks i'm doing the voice breaking deliberately because you know it's to illustrate that he's uh, pubescent and those adults have said yeah, I see no problem with this whatsoever. He has then gone and placed what should be just illegal skins bets on a website and lost all your skins. And the response is to stick the kid in contract jail. <laughs> but you keep all the other dickheads that are gonna like literally walk down the road into magic beans like uh, for fuck's sake guys this can't be how we're doing things like i don't know maybe it's flipping if y'all are getting scammed by a fucking if you're in your 20s and a 16 year old's fucking scamming your shit and it's not even a scam it's not even a scam a scam is like, listen, man, if you give me this now, like, you, you're going to get this, like, 200% return on the money. That's a scam. Would you like to buy this NFT? That's a scam. This, can I lend your skins? <laughs> I promise I'll give them back, like. Yeah, all right, then, yeah. Yeah, just met you. That's your bad. That is 100% your bad. Maybe 99. I'll shave a percent off to be reasonable. Like, I'm not giving a 16-year-old boy my expensive shit. They're impulsive. They're fucking wild. By the way, it's eSports. You know Thorin's rule. You take five years off. It's an 11-year-old boy who's jacked you. You've been robbed by an 11-year-old boy. It's less bad because probably you're the 16-year-old boy now, but the point still stands. If you were 16 getting jacked by an 11-year-old boy, you'd be laughed off the schoolyard. You're in sixth form. He just got there. See the problem? Actually mental. And I, I saw this story because I was watching it unfold and I thought it has to be something mad. Like, I was thinking, this kid's a computer hacker or something. Like, he's like, uh, I'm putting in the numbers. You know, like, a bit weird, isn't it? But whatever. You know, like, uh, I thought, like, he's fucking going to be hacker man. Like, he's going to he's gonna jack all of the shit. He's going to have got their crypto wallets. He's going to fucking... He, 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 you know, like, because you do get these, like, prodigies when it comes to this stuff. Some savants, you know? No, he just asked to take something that was highly expensive. You know he's an impulsive teenager. You gave it to him. You then cry about how the impulsive teenager's done something impulsive. I'm sorry, man. Like, I think there's a lesson in this. You know, I think there's a lesson. And the lesson is... By the way, I won't even say what the lesson is. What I will say is, and just another reason, by the way, everyone who's ever touched a fucking skin is a dickhead. <laughs> like, for fuck's sake, what are y'all loaning skins for? What are y'all loaning skins for? What, what do you mean, loan a skin? All these players who go into dealers, oh, I'd love to play a tournament with that skin. Like, it's so expensive. Like, get a fucking grip of yourself. Get a grip of yourself. Put it this way. Best thing that could ever happen. One of the best. It's not the best thing. That's a lie. That's total hyperbole. I'm full of shit. Next. Right, a good thing that could happen would be if, if all of these fucking tournament operators just, nah, no skins, default only. Default only. Get this culture out of our fucking sport. Do you know what I mean? Like, for fuck's sake. Can you imagine if footballers 
were out there, right? And and somehow there were like millions of boots, and every boot was individually stitched, and some boots were like fucking rarer than others, and players were like going up to cobblers, desperately begging to borrow their shoes for the big match against United, like, you'd be sick to you, what the fuck is this, these people are fucking mental, diseased, you, you would just, you would, you couldn't take that seriously, that's happening in our fucking elite level eSport, by the way, please, please get a Sorry, your skin for this tournament, please. I promise I give it back. And then just an NHL TV thread. Simple has kept my knife. Oh, for fuck's sake. Stop giving people your skins. You prat. Just stop doing it. You do realise there's not a button you can press to get it back. As soon as you transfer it to them, you're even saying, you're even clicking on TOS that says, I understand what I'm doing, and I understand this is irreversible. It's there. So if you do that, and... Uh, 16! Fuck you! Fuck your skins! So there you go.